Thanks to Brilliant for sponsoring today's video. One thing that I find very interesting about the study of differential equations is that it's fairly easy to write down a simple looking differential equation that has a very difficult solution. And we're gonna explore exactly one of those today. And that's the differential equation y double prime equals y squared. So that seemingly looks very, very simple. But as we'll see, it's got a very complicated solution. But maybe before we dive into the solution of this differential equation, let's warm up by looking at two related differential equations. Not related in that they have similar solutions, but related in that they are little tweaks on this differential equation. So the first one will be y prime equals y squared, and the second one will be y double prime equals y. So for the first one, y prime equals y squared, we can use a so-called separation of variables technique. So let's recall that means we take dy by d dx to be equal to y squared. So we rewrite this with Leibniz notation. And then we abuse that Leibniz notation to split the differentials dy and dx into parts and move all the x parts to one side of the equation while we move all the y parts to another side of the equation. There's a more careful way to do this if you're interested, but that would be generally covered in like a differential equations class. Okay, so that means we get dy over y squared equals dx just by swapping those two things. And now we're going to anti-differentiate both sides. And so that's going to give us a minus 1 over y, whereas this one gives us x plus some constant, which I'll call a. But now we can uh, maybe solve for y pretty easily. And that will give us y equals 1 over a minus x. Maybe in order to really show what happened right there, let's replace this a with minus a. But since that's an arbitrary constant, you know, that doesn't really change what's going on. Okay, so we've solved this first one and we see that our solution is 1 over a minus x. Okay, so that's good. Let's put a box around that to show that we're done with this. And let's move on to the second one, y double prime equals y. And there's a fairly standard way to solve this differential equation using the theory of linear second order homogeneous differential equations with constant coefficients. That being said, we're gonna do something that's a little bit more from scratch because I think it's kind of an interesting take on this. So we're gonna take this differential equation and rewrite it as y double prime minus y equals zero, but then rewrite that as the differential operator, the second derivative with respect to x minus the identity operator, which I'll just call i, evaluated on y equals zero. And now we're going to factor that operator. So notice that this identity operator can be thought of as the identity squared operator, just because if you do the identity twice, you just get the identity. Notice this is like a difference of squares. So we can factor this like by d by dx plus the identity times d by dx minus the identity times y equals zero. But now from here, we're gonna collapse everything to the right of this b, d by dx plus the identity into a function u. And that gives us a new differential equation, which is d by dx plus the identity on this function u is equal to zero, which can be rewritten as u prime equals minus u after moving some things around. But now we can apply separation of variables to this just as we did over here. And I'll skip those details, but what we end up with is u equals a times e to the minus x. But now looping this form of u back into the fact that u satisfies the following differential equation, notice d by dx minus the identity operator, operating on y equals our function u gives us a new differential equation for y. So notice we have y prime minus y is equal to a times e to the minus x. Okay, so let's maybe bring that up to the top and then we'll finally solve for y. 
So this is where we left ourselves off. We used this like factorization of a differential operator technique to show that if y double prime equals y, then in fact y prime minus y equaled a times e to the minus x where a is some constant. So we essentially reduced the order of this differential equation. And now from here, we're gonna multiply by an integrating factor. And this integrating factor is based on the structure of the left-hand side here. Here, our integrating factor will be e to the minus x. So multiplying by that will give us e to the minus x times y prime plus negative e to the minus x times y equals a times e to the minus 2x. So I was careful to like maybe group this minus sign with the e to the minus x because as we see, negative e to the minus x is in fact the derivative of e to the minus x. So I'll write it like this, e to the minus x prime. But that allows us to see this right hand side of the equation as the derivative of e to the minus x times y using the, the product rule. Okay, so we've got the derivative of e to the minus x times y equals a times e to the minus 2x. But now we can just integrate both sides with respect to x, and then we'll have a solution for e to the minus x times y. So let's do that. So like I said, integrating both sides with respect to x will give us e to the minus x times y equals, let's see, that's gonna be minus a over two times e to the minus two x plus b. But now I'm gonna do a bit of a trick. I'll rename this minus a over two as just a, maybe if you're uncomfortable with that, let's call it a naught. So in other words, I absorb that minus half into our constant um, a. Okay, so now we can multiply both sides by e to the x to solve for y, and we end up with a times e to the minus x plus b times e to the x, where I just renamed a not equal to a. And that would be like a final answer for the solution to this differential equation up here. Okay, so now that we're warmed up with like techniques of solving differential equations, well, simple differential equations, let's look at our goal, which is y double prime equals y squared. So now we're ready to look at our goal differential equation. And we're gonna start this thing off by multiplying both sides by y prime. That'll be the trick here. Okay, so that's gonna give us y double prime times y prime equals y squared times y prime. Okay, and then we can re-envision this as follows. So this left-hand side is in fact equal to some derivative of a power of y prime. In fact, this is one half times the derivative with respect to x of y prime quantity squared. So let's just talk our way through that. So the derivative with respect to x of y prime squared, so the two will come down and multiply this half down to the number one, and then we'll get a y prime and then a y double prime. That's from the chain rule. So just to reiterate what's going on here, this is all because of the chain rule. And then what's going on on this right-hand side? Well, it's actually something pretty similar. Here we have one third times the derivative with respect to x of y cubed, kind of for the same reason. We have the chain rule again there. Okay, so now let's move some things around and then use the linearity of the derivative operator to say that now we know that the derivative with respect to x of one half times y prime squared minus one third times y cubed equals zero. So again, like I said, I just moved some things around here. So we've got the derivative of this function equals zero, but the only type of function that has a derivative of zero is a constant function. So that means that all of this stuff which I'm putting in this orange box is just equal to a constant. So we have one half 
y prime quantity squared minus one third y cubed equals a constant. Let's maybe keep the theme that we did before and use our constant to be the number a. So now let's move some things around. We have y prime squared equals two thirds y cubed plus, well this is really like 2a, but I'll just like absorb that in there and write that as a. Where as I said before, here I'm absorbing this multiplication by two here into our number a, which since it's an arbitrary constant, that's totally fine. But now let's see what we've got. We can take a square root here. We won't worry about a positive or a negative square root. I'll let you think about what goes on in both of those cases. And that gives us y prime equals the square root of 2 over 3 y cubed plus our number a. But now again, this is a separable differential equation. Actually, this is something called an autonomous differential equation, but all autonomous first order differential equations are separable. So let's see, that gives us dy by dx equals this square root of 2 thirds y cubed plus a. And then finally, we get dy over this square root of 2 thirds y cubed plus a equals dx. So we've got something like that. But if we were to finish this off, we'd want to take the antiderivative of both sides. The antiderivative of this right-hand side is very clearly just x plus some constant, which I'll call b. But the antiderivative of this left-hand side is really, really complicated. In fact, you have to use a special function. This is called an elliptical integral. Well, actually, it's in the family of elliptical integrals. And you could go down a whole rabbit hole looking at all of these things. So we'll actually stop this very general solution here. And I'll just like kind of write up what this general solution comes to. And then we'll look at a specific case of this. So in, so in fact, when all is said and done, the general solution, which I'll say is y, is something called the Weierstrass p function, or it's related to the Weierstrass p function. This is the cube root of 6 times the Weierstrass p function of x plus some constant c over the cube root of 6. And then you've got all of these parameters built into this. So our first parameter is 0, and then our second parameter is some other constant c2. So just to reiterate what's going on here is you have to take this antiderivative, but this antiderivative is really complicated. It's an elliptical function. And then take the inverse of this elliptical function to give you this Weierstrass p function. That being said, let's maybe jump back up to this spot right here and look at the case when a is equal to zero just for a nice simplification of the problem. So now we're looking at a little bit of a simplification of our problem where that constant in the associated first order differential equation was equal to zero. So we've got y prime is the square root of 2 thirds times y cubed. This is a separable differential equation which we've worked with earlier in this video. So we can write this as dy by dx equals the square root of 2 over 3 times y to the 3 halves. And then we can move all the y's to one side, giving us y to the minus 3 halves dy equals square root of 2 over 3 times dx. Again, we're abusing notation here. Now we'll take the antiderivative of both sides. So we'll use the power rule over here. So we've got to increase this exponent by 1 and divide by the new exponent. That gives us minus 2y to the minus half equals the square root of 2 over 3x plus a constant b. Now we could maybe divide both sides by negative 2. So let's see, that's going to give us y to the half, which is the same thing as 1 over the square root of y is equal to b minus um, x over the square root of 6. So the square root of 6 comes in here from dividing both sides by 2 and bringing that inside of the square root. And then we absorbed a minus sign into b just to make it a little bit simpler.
Okay, so if one over the square root of y is this, we can easily solve for y, and we'll get y is equal to one over this whole thing squared. So we have b minus x over the square root of six quantity squared. So we've got something like that. And now from here, I would maybe multiply the numerator and the denominator by six. So let's do that. We'll bring the six inside, but as we bring the six inside, we've got to take its square root because we've got the square here. That means we'll cancel the square root of six in the denominator, and you guessed it, we're gonna absorb the square root of six into the b, and that's gonna give us y equals six over x minus b squared, where I use the fact that this squared allows us to switch the subtraction without any problem. Okay, so in the end, we've got this nice solution for our original differential equation, but of course, that was based off of some simplification up here, and that's a good place to stop. If you would like to get guided, hands-on practice solving problems like the ones seen on this channel and much more, make sure to check out today's sponsor, Brilliant.org. Brilliant has wonderful interactive math, science, and computer science courses at all levels. Did you like the differential equations type problems that we did in this video? Well, you're in luck. Brilliant has two differential equations courses if you want to learn more about this subject. All of the courses at Brilliant.org are excellently designed to help you build an intuitive, full understanding of the material. What are you waiting for? To get started for free, visit Brilliant.org slash Michael Penn or click the link in the description. And the first 200 of you will get 20% off Brilliant's annual premium subscription. And once again, I'd like to thank Brilliant for sponsoring today's video.